I found these articles that you guys should definitely uh, check out. I'll read them to you as soon as I can find them because I know you guys can't read. Uh, this is your week four recap, by the way. Vice presidential debate. Nobody gives a shit. Somebody got shot, of course. Ah, 40% off candy at Dwayne Reed. That sounds... Oh, found it. Okay. Bundy rapes an Ewok. Check this out. Bundy, greatest fantasy owner, that's in parentheses, had what was thought to be a tough matchup this week versus Ewok rape. Luckily, Bundy, GFO, pulled out his penis and managed to position himself behind the three-foot creature. He then pulled out... No, he then grabbed the Ewok by his furry hips and began to thrust back and forth inside the walls of the Ewok's butthole. There was blood, there was sweat, but in the end, Bundy scored a season-high 130 points. The Ewok was later admitted to St. Lucas Hospital. It is currently in critical condition. Sad story. But yes, Bundy managed to score 130 points. So not only do we win here at Team Bundy, but we win big because 130 points is the highest point total of the season. And of course, th this comes by way of my excellent trading that I did this week with Paul and with Jay Ray, uh, getting Frank Gore on the squad and also getting Calvin Benjamin. But Frank Gore and Matt Jones basically won that game for me. It wasn't so much as Julio Jones because that's not to be expected on a regular basis. Frank Gore, Frank Gore scored 14 points and Matt Jones scored 19. Now that combined is way more than these two assholes who I won't even mention did for me the first two weeks. So again, making those necessary changes in order to win games. And as I said last week, my point total is right up there with you so-called elitists in the fucking league who are fucking 4-0 and think you're fucking shishi foo foo. I have 407 points, all right? I'm third in the league in points behind Eric at number two with 410 and Ed with 423. Now, obviously, the deal here is, is that this can, the, 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 we can go back and forth on this from week to week. And sooner or later, we will, once we're in the same bracket and we will all start to outscore each other by certain points and, you know, not do as much in other weeks. So this is, it's going to go back and forth and back and forth until eventually, now that I have gotten the squad that I have gotten, I basically have the best team on paper. Eventually, I will be the highest scoring team in the league. This is just a fact, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a fucking opinion. So now that I am one and three, now the situation gets very interesting because it, it begins to take the same sort of tone that other seasons have taken. You start off one and three, you beat somebody the next week, then you're two and three, you cripple that person, you sort of pull them down, you get up another notch in the division, and then in three or four weeks, you clinch a playoff spot. It's just, it, it's getting old, ladies and gentlemen. You guys getting excited over the first two or three seasons is, uh, sorry, I mean, the, over the first two or three weeks is getting even older. But we'll, we'll move on past that because there's another article here. Uh, ah, here it is. Andy did it again. Andy, WFO, WFO. Oh, worst fantasy. Oh, I like this. This guy's clever. I got to keep reading this. Continues to manage like a woman. Switching QBs in a desperate and embarrassing attempt to defeat Taint Sweat, which this reporter would argue doesn't take much. Hmm. Wonder how Paul's going to feel about that. Along with having a silly and clearly the most culturally insensitive name like Insuro Marbles Tanaka, which, by the way, why does he have a team name referencing a baseball movie in a fantasy league? That's a good question. Andy, WFO, is a confused owner and a xenophobe and quite possibly a bad person. Okay, this is taking a kind of a dark tone. I just skimmed through. The, all right. Andy's a terrible person. Yeah, he's getting a bit redundant. Uh, less than nothing. Worse than hit. Okay. Okay, we got that. So, yes. Andy did it again. 
and he's done what he has been doing since last season and the season before that, which is he's taking quarterbacks that basically are on the same level and he continues to switch them with matchups. Now, again, since more of you are listening to the recap, I will reinstate my philosophy about doing this. I think this is a big mistake. It's a big mistake because you are really just switching the same player, the same caliber player. If you value quarterback points to that degree, I would say, why the fuck wouldn't you just draft either Rodgers, Brady, Cam, Andrew Luck, If you prioritize quarterback points to that degree that you're willing to change your matchup on just, you know, silly little matchups, why the fuck wouldn't you get the grade A, the real deal of a quarterback? We know what a decent quarterback performance is, right? A a decent quarterback performance would at least be, say, minimum 15 to 16 points. Anything above that is, is good, you know? 15 to 16 points. That means a guy's got like 200 yards, you know, maybe threw in a touchdown in there. That's a decent performance. If you draft a quarterback, which you can't say with a straight face that you don't think he's capable of getting 200 yards and a touchdown against any team in this league, then you probably shouldn't draft that fucking quarterback. Now, what makes this even better is that Andy lost because of this. Because he lost to Taint Sweat by a final score of 82 to 78. Carlson Palmer scored 11 points and Matt Ryan scored 35. Thank you, Julio Jones. All things are possible through Julio. So that's a difference of 24 points. 24 points, which obviously Andy could have had, go to his total, to, 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 to his point total. This is what crippled Andy last year. This is what kept Andy out of the playoffs because Andy got cute and lost those points towards the end of the season that would have given him the the, the opportunity to skate right into the playoffs. I forgot who he let in the playoffs with those moves, but maybe one of you guys can remind me. I have no fucking clue. But moving forward, this should get a lot easier for Andy because Carlson Palmer suffered a concussion in this Sunday's game and Matt Ryan seems to be healthy. So maybe he'll put Matt Ryan in there instead uh, instead of Carlson Palmer. Now, this is this is my philosophy, guys. There's no reason to do this. When you give yourself too many options, it's when you will fuck yourself over. Just pick a quarterback and go with that quarterback. Now this week, Cam Newton is hurt because he himself had a concussion too. So, you know, I may keep a quarterback around or pick one up, but if Cam's not, if Cam is ready to go, why the fuck am I going to keep that guy? There's no reason to keep him because I'm not going to start him over Cam. You know, it's like the situation with Eric. Eric has... Uh, He has Tony Romo and he has Aaron Rodgers. And I think he has another quarterback too. And Eric also has three tight ends. Eric is just, Eric just fucking hoards people. And I have no clue why he does that. So the logic of this is you're keeping Tony Romo for what? You're keeping Tony Romo because when he comes back, he'll be better than Aaron Rodgers. No, that can't possibly be it. Aaron Rodgers just had his bye this week. Aaron Rodgers doesn't have a history of being injured. Why the need to keep Tony Romo? Are you trying to keep him away from somebody in order to build some sort of trade bait? Who the fuck is going to want to trade for a quarterback who has a history of getting injured as much as Tony Romo who's coming in late in the season, you don't know how the fuck he's going to fucking perform, how many games it's going to take him to warm up and and sync up with Dez. So what's the reason to keep him on the team? Stuff like this doesn't make any sense, but this is is the thinking of Andy, this is the thinking of Eric, and they, for for whatever reason, they think that this shit is going to work, and it never fucking does. 
great articles that were written. I'd really like to know who was um who's a, who's a writer of those things. I think that was spot on, especially the thing about not needing much to beat Paul. Okay. So the final scores this week was, as I said, 130 to 91, Bundy, 58 to 91, Pedro over Hensel, 83 to 82, the victory goes to the Kamish, who did the same thing, except it was a little different because Russell Wilson had a... A, a nagging injury so I, I guess that's a yeah, commish gets the slide for that one because I don't think the commish really he, he he has the same habits as Andy in that regard 102 to 61 by Ed and 82 to 78 taint sweat moving on to week five we've got an interesting matchup between taint sweat and myself and I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this because Paul obviously talks a lot of shit. Now, he's got uh, Kobe Fleener on his bye, so he'll obviously have to uh, fill that up. And he's, you know, he's in a tough position because Travis Kelsey is also on a bye, so he's going to have to get uh, a tight end out of the fucking bushel basket. Uh, he's, he's got some pretty tough matchups as far as his, uh, his, his running backs are concerned, uh, cause he's got the Buffalo Bills and he's got the Minnesota, uh, defense versus Lamar Miller. Now these are rankings, they, they, they've ranked them at 22 for Buffalo against run defense and 17 for the Vikings against the run as well. But we all know that those are solid real life defenses and even if they give up a touchdown or you know like 50 or 60 yards i don't think it's gonna be enough to help you paul and i think you know that as well this is a different bundy team it's not your father's bundy team it's not the same team from last week it is a different team is it a it is an example of somebody who refuses to be on a sinking ship and who makes trades which by the way i do want to say what i've said before that as far as trading Please, everyone, stop with the send me an offer. There is no value added to that player when you say, this guy's available, send me an offer. If you are eager to trade, you should make an offer. It can't be any more simple than that. You don't add any value to the player by saying, hey, I got this piece of shit here. Somebody send me an offer. You know, like there's a very big difference between saying something is cheap and saying something is inexpensive. It's all in how you word it. It's all in how you approach the person that you're trying to sell to. And when you say, oh, you can just pick him up. He's a piece of shit. Blah, nobody's going to want him. That's why nobody trades with you guys. I made two trades this week because you got to be proactive. You know, you just fucking throw them out there in one of these idiot to be interested in it you know and, and then pick them up uh, folks i really have nothing more to say to you for this particular re uh, recap because i have uh some some more work to do some more paid work to do which you guys you guys can, can admire that right since your fucking fantasy leagues are so fucking important uh because you're getting paid for them so this was your week for recap and as always may your quarterbacks get hurt before they leave the locker room May your running backs pull their calf muscles and may your wide receivers get arrested for marijuana possession. Go fuck yourselves.